In preparation for any tensioning procedure, verify all personnel have been fully trained on safe use of hydraulic tensioning equipment. Review all hydraulic tensioning equipment manuals, instructions, and safety procedures before use. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment. Make sure that all tensioners are handled carefully and do not drop any component. Large tools may be heavy and may require the use of lifting equipment to safely install the tools. For ease of installation, the components of larger tensioners may be installed individually. Do not continue to pressurize a tensioner if the maximum stroke indicator warning line appears. In the rare event that a bolt fractures under tension, it can be propelled at high speeds with potential to cause serious injury. Do not stand in the line of fire which is the area near or along the line of axis of the bolts during tensioning. While tensioners are under pressure, snug nuts standing to the side of the tensioner. Review all precautions against the risk of high-pressure hydraulic fluid injection. Do not handle or adjust hydraulic tensioners or hoses when pressurized. Never pressurize without terminating all female couplers, as this could lead to a failure. Use hydraulic hoses with locking couplers wherever possible. Identify all equipment required for completing the tensioning procedures. Hydraulic pump, tensioners, lead hose, interconnection hoses, T-block, 8mm Tommy bars, 10mm Tommy bars, hose plugs, Properly inspect all equipment to ensure they are free of damage or leaks. Resolve any issue with the equipment before proceeding. Inspect all hoses and make sure all hoses are in good condition. Verify all hoses are marked with serial number and maximum operating pressure. Discard any hose that is worn, damaged, kinked, or may have been subjected to heat or fire. High Torque provides a pressure to load chart for each tensioner, which may be used by the customer or engineer to develop the tensioning parameters and pressures. Verify all tensioning calculations have been provided by a qualified engineer trained in hydraulic tensioning. Verify flange details, bolt size, number of bolts, and gasket details. Verify percent coverage plan has been provided, for example, 50% coverage. With 50% coverage, the Group A bolts are tensioned at pressure A and the Group B bolts are tensioned at pressure B. Verify appropriate number and size tensioners, hoses, and associated equipment are available for the coverage. Follow any special instructions provided by the customer for preparing the flange and bolts for tensioning. Confirm that standard ASME flanges will be assembled per ASME PCC1 guidelines. Install bolts and nuts allowing thread protrusion on the side of the flange where tensioners are to be installed. Install gasket as required by the customer instructions. Washers are typically not required and not used for tensioning. Lubrication is generally not required in hydraulic tensioning. Verify the minimum length of thread protrusion is at least one times the bolt diameter. Longer bolt protrusion is acceptable and will work with most tensioners. Snug all nuts in preparation for tensioning. Verify flange has remained in proper alignment per ASME guidelines. When using 50% coverage, label the bolts on the flange Group A and Group B. Verify the pump has oil filled to the appropriate level. If additional oil is needed, remove the oil fill port cap and fill until the oil is at the appropriate level. Connect the lead hose to the pump. Plug the female end of the lead hose and lock couplers.
Adjust the pressure control valve on the pump counterclockwise so the valve is fully open before starting. Verify the appropriate electrical service is available. Plug in the pump. Hold the pendant and press the power switch to start the motor. Push and hold the up button to start the fluid circulation. Then adjust the pressure control valve clockwise to increase the pressure to the target. Release the up button at the target pressure. Lock the pressure control valve at the target pressure by turning the wing nut clockwise until snug tight. Push the down button to release the pressure. Test several cycles of the pump to ensure it consistently reaches target pressure by pushing the up button to verify target pressure, and then pushing the down button to release pressure. With the pump depressurized, push the power switch to turn the pump off. Make sure that all tensioner components are handled carefully and do not drop any part. Install tensioner cylinder and bridge assembly by placing them over the bolt to be tensioned. Thread the puller onto the bolt until it is flush with the cylinder. Repeat tensioner installation until all tensioners in the group are installed. Align the tensioners on the flange so that the bridge windows are accessible from the side of the flange. Snug the thread puller with the Tommy bar to ensure bridge windows remain accessible from the side of the flange. Ensure the pump is depressurized before installing hoses. Remove the plug on the lead hose. Connect the lead hose female coupler to the center male coupler on the T-block and lock couplers. Install the first interconnection hose with single female end to the lead hose T-block male coupler. And the female on the interconnection hose block to the first tensioner. Install second interconnection hose single female end to the male on the first interconnection hose block. And the female on the interconnection block to the second tensioner. Continue connecting interconnection hoses in series by connecting the single female end to the male on the previous hose interconnection block and the female on the interconnection block to the tensioner. Connect the male on the last hose interconnection block to the lead hose T-block female coupler. Verify all hose couplers are locked. Verify all couplers are terminated. With 50% coverage, Group A bolts will be tensioned at the higher pressure. With the pump already tested and locked at the required pressure, turn on the pump. While standing out of the line of fire, increase pressure by pressing and holding the up button on the pendant until the pressure reaches the target pressure. Press the pendant power switch to off at target pressure. Standing out of the line of fire, turn each nut clockwise using the Tommy bar until snug. Start the pump and push the down button to release the pressure. 
Repeat the tensioning procedure two more cycles at pressure A by increasing to target pressure. Turn the nuts further if possible at target pressure and then depressurize. After completing three pressurization cycles to target pressure, release the pressure and turn off the power. Disconnect all hoses, leaving lead hose connected to the pump. Plug the female end of the lead hose. Remove the tensioners from group A bolts and install them on group B bolts. Install hoses as before to connect the tensioners in series to tensioners on group B. Adjust pump pressure control valve on the pump counterclockwise to completely open the valve. Start the pump by pressing the start button. Push and hold the up button. Gradually adjust the pressure control valve clockwise, increasing pressure to target pressure B, and turn the pump off. Lock the pressure at target with the wing nut. Standing from the side of the flange, turn each nut clockwise using the Tommy bar until snug. Start the pump and push the down arrow to release the pressure. Repeat the tensioning procedure two more cycles by increasing pressure to B. Turn the nuts further if possible at each pressurization and then depressurize. After completing three pressurization cycles at pressure B, release the pressure and turn the pump off. The tensioning procedure is complete. Disconnect hoses and remove tensioners. Install tensioners on first group of bolts to achieve 50% coverage, ensuring that windows are accessible from the side of the flange. Tighten the thread puller to the cylinder. Then, back the thread puller off one full revolution to give the nut space to loosen. Set up pump and connect hoses in series as when tensioning. Turn on the pump. Press the up button. Gradually turn pressure control valve to increase pump pressure until the tummy bar can turn a nut counterclockwise, breaking the nut free. Stop the pump. Loosen the nut approximately three windows counterclockwise. Continue to loosen remaining nuts. Only if a nut remains locked, increase the pressure as necessary until all nuts come loose. Release the pressure. Stop the pump. Disconnect hoses and move tensioners to the next group of bolts. Reconnect hoses and repeat the process to gradually loosen group B nuts. Once all nuts are loose, ensure pressure is released. Stop the pump. Disconnect hoses and remove the tensioners.